Hello internet friends, in this video I'm going to talk about the button layout and settings for my HOTAS flight stick in Star Wars Squadrons. This is really just an example of what works for one player, me, uh, but by talking through my choices I'm hoping it will give you an idea of the things to consider when mapping your keys and the options available for things like dead zone and sensitivity in the game. I'm using the Logitech X52, which is a mid-range HOTAS stick. Not the most expensive, not the cheapest either, but most of these points will be relevant, whatever stick you're using for squadrons. So first up are the dead zone and sensitivity settings, which are in options, then go to controls. Scroll right down to the bottom. As you can see, I have no dead zone at all. These options weren't here at launch, but since they were patched, I've played around with them and I found that I still don't want any dead zone. In case you don't know, dead zone is the amount you can move your stick before the input registers. You would add dead zone if you wanted a little leeway so the ship isn't too twitchy. For me, this hasn't been relevant in squadrons at all, and adding dead zone slowed down my responsiveness in combat, I found. Sensitivity is a different matter, though. As you can see, I've set mine to 80, apart from the throttle, which is at 100. Play around with this, but I found 100% sensitivity for the stick led to me overshooting enemies all the time and not being able to aim properly. Throttle I've set to 100 since on the X52 the throttle has enough resistance already and you could tweak it mechanically with a little dial on the side. As I say play around here but for me I found dead zone wasn't required but sensitivity I did need it so you may need to tweak it. Next it's on to the buttons on the stick. Hang tight because there's a lot to go through and I want to highlight the ones that I've selected that seem important to me and some that I've skipped over. So go to remap controls at the top then flight then flight stick. The options here can be too much when you start. Honestly, there are so many, and if you're anything like me, you don't have the numbering of all the buttons on your stick committed to memory. If that's the case, don't worry, play around. Click on an option, bind it to a button to discover what that button's number is. You can always restore uh, to defaults after the fact. So I'll go through the options that are essential to bind, and then in the next section, I'll show you with the aid of a diagram how I've bound them on my stick to make them quick to use in combat. First up are the pitch, yaw, and roll for your stick. Pretty obvious, you'd think, wouldn't you? Um, but actually, these weren't bound by default, so don't overlook them. You might have to put your default movement for your stick in here. Throttle increase and decrease is pretty uh, self-explanatory, isn't it? But luckily these were bound by default. Thank you, Motive. The first squadron specific command is the boost command. You'll be using this a lot. I would recommend the combo thing here. Underneath you'll see an option to drift while boosting. That's to use another button instead of the combo, which is to hold the same button. So to free up buttons, I would suggest using the combo. So one press to boost and then to drift, you're holding it. Uh, in combat. If you want to know how to drift, there's a there's a link to a video on how to drift up in the top right here for you. Fire is obvious, pretty obvious. Usually the main trigger on your stick will be bound to this. Next to the buttons for firing your left and right auxiliary commands. Again, I'd suggest using the combo buttons here. Press the button to fire and double tap to dumb fire if it's a missile. I do find the combo things work the best, mainly because it, it frees you up to use other buttons. Deploy countermeasures, another important one needs to be bound. I don't have the show loadout button because I've generally checked my loadout before I launch. I, I even forgot that was an option. If you don't talk to your mechanic about your loadout before launch, uh, you need to get that down. Next are the options for shunting power between systems. I would suggest using the combo buttons again. If you're using the basic power settings rather than the advanced, you will always maximize power in the given system. So the second option to maximize power isn't really used, but it will be a factor if you switch on the advanced mode, I believe. Anyway, for now, use combo again, since it does everything you need and frees up buttons. Don't forget to bind balance power to something for when you're done shunting power around. Next are the focus shields and convert power buttons. If you don't know, rebels generally focus shields. That's like their special ability ships with shields and Imperials convert power quickly from weapons to engines. It's sort of a trade-off strengths of the different factions. So these are all important things you need to bind. In the next section, I'll talk about binding them so it doesn't get confusing on the HOTAS. 
You can safely ignore the shield power menu. I don't see the point of that because the buttons above do what the menu does. It just brings up a menu that you can flick through. But when the buttons do it, I don't know why you need the menu. Um, next is select target ahead. This is one time I've chosen not to use the combo since for targeting the enemy ahead, I want to be sure that's the only thing that button does. I don't want the targeting wheel popping up by accident. You may be different, but... Cycle targets is an important one when you're not targeting the closest guy, the guy shooting at you, you want to be able to cycle through targets, so we need to bind that. Next is target my attacker, very important. Not only does it find the person shooting at you, it also seems to just target the closest player. It's, uh, it's the best way to get that guy who's on your tail. You need the targeting wheel in certain situations, so don't overlook it, the targeting wheel here. And you'll want to bind the buttons you use to navigate it. Usually that'll be one of your POV hats on your stick. I don't have any shortcuts set right now. You may find them useful, but I haven't needed any shortcuts here. Okay, ping target, we're getting to the end now, is another thing I have on a separate button, acknowledge ping also. You may want to play around with the combo, but I found it a little bit fiddly. Bind a button to bring up your comms wheel and one of your hats to navigate it probably. You can use the same one for the targeting wheel. And finally, free look if you're not in VR, which is a surefire way to die if you're trying to do that in the middle of combat. There's really no way to free look intuitively. Now you need a VR headset. <laughs> But you might as well bind it to something. You never know. If you want to get some beauty shots for taking screenshots and stuff, free luck can be useful. Anyway, phew, uh, those are all the basic things you need to bind. And it's only half the picture, right? Uh, how should you bind them? Well, I can show you that. And it might give you some ideas with the aid of a diagram. Some visual aids. Hey, have a walk. Okay, so let's look at the stick first. Bear in mind, the numbering of the buttons here doesn't really matter since they'll be different depending upon your stick. And if I actually put the numbers in, it's gonna cause confusion if you have a different stick and different numbers. So I've decided not to. The point of this diagram is just to show you how you might arrange things according to relative importance of buttons and the ease of using them. So I've chosen to put the left and right auxiliary abilities on the main facing of the stick on the left and the right of where my thumb generally rests. It makes sense to me. Uh, they're very important buttons and you want them on the left and the right according to which ability is on the left and the right on screen, right? Left. Uh, select target is also close by since you that's one of the things you'll be using most and underneath that is the POV hat which I use for power distribution. Very, very handy having these POV hats. And there are three on the X52, for instance. But this one, all four of those commands, I can map to this POV hat. So we've got some very important uh, abilities there on the front facing. The hat in the top left is another really useful one. I use that to collect a load of things together. So ping target, cycle target, target attacker, and acknowledge ping. All on that thing all together. So those commands are all related. Put them all on that one hat. Before I forget, we have the fire button on the main trigger there. Finally, I use the buttons along the bottom to bring up the targeting and comms wheel. That's not too hard to do when you're flying around. And so you hold one of those buttons at the bottom and then you use the POV hat that you've selected to navigate as you hold the button. That's what I do at the moment. You navigate the wheel with, with whatever hat you designated in the commands. And for me, it's the main one in the center there where I balance power button. You can see a couple of buttons here I'm not using. So there's actually plenty of stuff to play around with, but some stuff is just about how intuitive it, it, it is. The big fire button at the top of the stick, for instance, you'd think that would be very useful. It's a very prominent button. It even has a flip up kind of covering to make it like a movie. Top Gun or something. Well, I find it quite hard to reach that button with my thumb when I'm twisting and rolling, uh, twisting to the yaw and stuff. So actually that button there is not very useful for me. Whatever you choose, you probably won't get it right the first time. I would just encourage you to play around and experiment. All right, let's look at the throttle next. I have the big button at the top for fire countermeasures and the boost button in a place that feels better for me down below. My thumb naturally rests there, so boost is very intuitive. There's another POV hat on the rear of the throttle, so this is what I use for focus shields and convert power. Those are all, again, clumped together related skills. Some of them aren't used depending upon what ship you're piloting, 
but having them all on this one hat keeps them organized then to balance those systems i use this button on the front of the throttle there as i say this is just an example of how to map things onto your stick and throttle and things will be different according to your hotas the key is to be patient, play around and tweak things until you have them set up to your liking. And don't worry about dying if you don't have the optimal setup that you, you will learn from every death what's the better thing to have there, what works better. If you want to know more about the Logitech X52, I have a video of me unboxing it and uh, trying the stick for the first time. So you might find that helpful. So click on it if you do. It's on the end card. And apart, but apart from that, I hope you found the video helpful and you go on to win every single match you ever play from now on. That's not going to happen, is it? But good luck and I hope this vid helped.